What's up, guys? This is Pedro from My Stuttering Life, where you will hear the good, the bad, the very ugly. We're going to laugh. We're going to cry, but through it all, just know that you are not alone. So let's get started. This is episode number 135, and my returning special guest is Tom Love it. Tom has written a book that was published this year titled Words Unspoken, The Science, Experience, and Treatment of Stuttering. I am honored to have him again as a guest with me on the My Stuttering Life podcast. Welcome, Tom Love it. Hi, Pedro. Uh, thanks again for having me on the podcast. I'm really excited to see you again and, and chat. Sir, this is a huge honor. I last had you on the the uh, podcast on October 2, on my birthday, in 2021. And now it's October uh, uh, 23. It is two years later. And you wrote an awesome book. And we will talk about that. And so to, to have a guest uh, come back. Ooh. I feel good, sir. You have just made my day, my year. Uh, it's just awesome. Uh, um, and I thank you very much. No, uh, no. Uh, thanks for having me. Like you were, you were one of the like, very first people to like support me uh, and like reach out on a uh, uh, on Reddit. And yeah, it was crazy to talk to you years ago, back when it's crazy to think like how much, how much you know long how long ago that was. And then yeah, and now the book's done and the book's out. Ooh, yes, sir. And it is an awesome book. Okay, so here we go. So I wrote down just a handful of questions. So let's get started. So what inspired you to write this book? So um, January, I guess it was uh, uh, 2018, I was going through a very like rough time in my my life and like a lot of like big picture things. There was some like family issues. Um, I just been let go from my job and the job hunt wasn't going well. And uh, I would lurk on on r slash stutter on Reddit. And I would be reading these stories of like people, like young people who were kind of like drowning under the weight of their stutter. And I always wanted to help and like write things, but like there were just so many that it just kind of seemed like uh, there wasn't a lot of reason. It was, it was like I can spend a few hours writing a comment just to somebody that five people will see and it'll disappear forever. Um, so I kind of had the tension in the back of my mind for months. And then, uh, there was, uh, this one, night I read the story, which I, I mentioned in the book, um, a young man who was like, who's, you know, he was like 20 ish and his life was, his life was not going well. And he felt like his stifle, his stutter was stifling him from, from doing anything. Uh, and he, and like, this is a, a direct quote, like he ended his his uh, post with like, if, if I believed in reincarnation, I would just kill myself and hope to be reborn. So without stutter, and that was like in- very powerful and like really stuck with me, but I didn't, I didn't comment on it or anything. I was just like, it, but it was, it was the back of my mind. That I wasn't doing anything about it. Um, and then next day I go to coffee shop to like apply to jobs. Um, and there was this barista there who I'd seen before who I thought was like really cute. And I was like, Oh, she's really cute. But then like, we started talking while I was getting my coffee and it turns out we had, we had some things in common. I was like, Oh wow. Like she's not only very cute. Like we have things in common. Like I, I, I need to ask for that. Like I, there's, I have to do this or I'm just going to like kick myself for the rest of my life. Um, so like, despite all the stress and all the things going on in my life, I went to her, I was like, Hey, I think you're pretty. Would you like, would you like to go out sometime? Uh, and I, I won't tell you how that went, but, uh, I, I left like just so full of like adrenaline. And I started writing a post on Reddit, um, just which there's been not many posts like this of like, hey, like I also have a stutter. I've also been through some very dark times, but it's gone better. It's it's possible. Like if I can do it, so can you. And here's my advice and my experience. Um, and as, as I started telling the story from that day uh, about asking that girl out, there's other times in my life where like I went to someone was like, hey, like I think you're really pretty. Like I have some time and didn't go and, and all those experiences helped me just go up to a girl on a random day and just be like, hey, you know, despite all the stress, I was able to like sit, speak up in spite of my fear of stuttering, which like there was a whole 
there was a moment where I was like, I can just walk home. I can just walk right out. I'm not, I'm not, I won't stutter. I won't embarrass myself. I just, there's, there's the door. There's her. Here's my opportunity. I can just leave. Um, but, you know, I got myself to speak in spite of my fear of stuttering. Um, but all those experiences kind of led to that, that one experience. So as I started telling the story from that day, I realized, oh, like there's these other experiences I could, I need to tell you about. I need to talk about too. Um, and it just went from being like, oh, like one read a post to two Reddit posts to like, oh no, like this is, I've, I do have a lot to say about this just on my own advice, my own experience. And that started. Ooh, that is awesome, sir. Cause I mean, I mean, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't have to tell you, Tom. I mean, uh, let me see every day. Oh, hold on. Every hour, every, every, a minute, every second of the day is a struggle. If you have a stutter and and what uh what I had learned uh, later on um in life um I had heard a quote and it just hit me hard. Everything you want is on the other side of fear, and that is the truth. I mean, because I mean, I did what you did. I I got out of of my my a comfort zone and then i did it and i mean it's like whoo, look what i did look what I, look <laughs> look how far i have come and look what i did so that 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 is just awesome sir awesome okay now so in your book you open up about your 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 struggles with stuttering how did you navigate the the um emotional um aspects of of a recounting all of those experiences yeah it was um it's it's funny because like when i like started writing the book you know i was i was like subscribed to our stuttering i would see stories come through and it was kind of like in the back of my mind but i was kind of like oh like i kind of know where i am like i i I can manage it well enough i still have bad days i still have embarrassing days i still don't speak up at times but like i was like i'm, I'm kind of like there i, I kind of crossed you know i'm kind of like in the safe zone now um but then going through those stories again like uh it, yeah it, it got it, it got like pretty emotional at times and it was also funny because like in, in in the first iteration of the book which was only my advice and my experiences um i i told stories of like these times that i'd asked girls out and like it, there was a barista at a different coffee shop who same thing we kind of hit it off and i went to ask her out and like it was funny because i was like I, I spent like two or three hours one night like working on it and then i like went to that coffee shop to get coffee and i was just like and like and that was like a bad that experience was like a bad one like i i was like super nervous and like i stuttered terribly and i feel like i embarrassed myself a lot but to like to like have that in that experience of like, oh, like I was so nervous and then my speech didn't work at all. And then having to go back up to that same counter and be like, hi, can I have like a large coffee to go? <laughs> like it was, it was, it was fun. Oh, yes, sir. Awesome. 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 So now, uh, were there uh, many uh, challenges that you had faced while uh, writing this book? Yeah, I think, um, so, I mean, it was, it was five years and, uh, there was lots of like ups and downs in my, in my personal life. Um, I started it after getting let go, uh, from my job. And then I got a job a few months later. I was, I was, I was writing, even though I was unemployed and applying for jobs and worried about money and I got a job and then that wasn't going to work out. So I left that after two months and I was unemployed and worried about money again. And then I got a great job. And I was like, awesome. And it was kind of like cool to like have like a really great day job and then be like, oh, but I'm also writing a book like hooray for me. Uh, and then that job fizzled out. So that was like even worse because um, I'm, I'm a software developer and there aren't enough people with my skill set. So like for two companies to fire you is like, why are they letting you go? Like, what is wrong with this person that like they'll fire this person twice? Um, so like that, that that then ended up being really rough but then um i landed with a really great like contracting company um so i was able to work and 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 even take my hours down in order to spend more time writing um 
but other than like professional life, which is also, you know, financial life and paying the bills, uh, just like five years of, li of life is a lot of ups and downs and lots of like, oh, it's going to work out. And nope, didn't work out this time. But then also just, uh, I think just like writing this book really just like basically justified my entire life. Like just, it was just like the greatest thing. It was often just a lot of like, just like almost like drudgery type work. Like I'd say out of like a month of, out of like a month of working on it, like 20 of those days were just like almost drudgery. I was like, this is bad. I was like, I'm writing a bad book. I'm a bad writer. Five of those days were like, oh, this is going pretty well. And then like one day would be like, oh my God, this is why I was born. Like, this is what I, 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 this is why I exist. Like, this is my path in life. I'm so grateful I found writing. Like, um, yeah, it was like, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's like, it really was like, the coolest thing I've ever done. And like, I, I remember like while I was writing, I was like, I don't, I was like, if I can like finish the book and then get hit by a bus, like the next day deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and here, so here is a, a great aspect. Okay. So I, I am not a speech, a therapist. Uh, I am not a PhD. And research, let me tell you, Tom, I, well, I don't have to tell you. Research, is, you know, it is my nemesis. And so I do have a background in psychology. But, I mean, let me tell you, those research papers, I mean, they will make your head explode. How did you, <laughs> how did you handle the aspect of, you know, of a doing a deep dive into all of this scientific research. It was, uh, it, 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 it was, it was so mind blowing that like, um, once I got into it, it was like, Oh my God, like this is an absolute gold mine. This is so interesting. So, um, as, as I described in, in, in the preface, like, um, so I've been working either full time or unemployed full time for the first, um, two and a half years of the book. And I was, Oh, nearing the end of the second draft of the book where I was like, it was just my advice and my experiences. Um, and I was working, working, working with this contract contracting company that allowed me to work part-time. So I could work, I could spend fewer hours working, which gave me more time to write more brain power to write. Um, and I, I wasn't like killing myself to work, to write two nights a week. I, I could write much more. So once I had more time, like one night I sat down to work, uh, to write at school, like what causes stuttering? And one paper was this kind of master's thesis of a historical overview of different like supposed causes and cures of uh, of, of stuttering. I was like, ah, you know, yeah, there isn't that wasn't great. And then uh, the second one, second one I read was the uh, study by uh, Kellen Neumann, uh, a 2008 paper that like, yeah, it, it was it's 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 one of like the most important like stuttering papers like in the in, in the entire book um, that that showed that. Uh, intensive speech therapy uh, improved fluency by reducing, like by changing the brain. And it showed me that we know that researchers knew a lot more about like what causes stuttering in the brain and then what we can do about it. And then like even crazier on top of all that was the idea of uh, successful management and that like that uh, st stutterers brains fire differently during speech than a fluent speaker. It's like, kind of makes sense um and that can get worse uh there can be adaptations by the brain that try to improve fluency to actually make it worse uh and intensive speech therapy removes those and kind of brings it back to baseline which is still stuttering so like two percent stuttered syllables um but that there's this whole different path of, people, of highly fluent stutterers who still have a stutter are still nervous about it um but much more fluent uh, and it wasn't caused by speech therapy and that this group of stutterers like have a bra brain activation pattern that's completely different than either fluent speakers or other stutterers. And that like blew my mind. And I was like, that, that's how I felt because at that time in my life, I was like, oh, like I, I am way more fluent than I was when I was younger. But it's also with like less effort or just like less struggle. Um, and so and, so that was just. So, I mean, that experience was like, oh, my God. And I was like, holy crap, this is insane. I, I was going to write the entire chapter, this the science chapter about that paper alone. Um, and then 
my uh, childhood best friend who's working worked in academia and computer science, I was telling him about, he's like, oh, you should go on, on Google Scholar and read every paper that's that cites that paper and read every paper cited by that paper. So I was like, so then I just like, I, I'll go through like any, any interesting point makers in research papers, they'll have a sentence and they'll reference that study right there. Anytime there's something interesting, I'll just open that study. And it ended up like, I would read one paper, open 10 new browser tabs, read a new paper and open 10 new browser tabs and just went on and on and on. At one point, I you know, dropped like 60 open tabs on my computer when I'm normally like a three to four tab person. Um, and I was like, okay, what? Well, I, I think bookmarks of all this. What happens if my computer crashes and I lose all this? And then that turned into making an Excel spreadsheet of like what I had read. Um, I also have like a, a, a Google Doc on like study notes. I was taking in-person handwritten notes and also on, on Google Docs. That's like nine point font and like 70 pages. Um, and it just, it was, it, it was, it was so easy to keep working on it because just because, um, it was just so fascinating. I was learning so much. And even if I, I also realized as I was working on it, that I was like, if this was just for me, I wouldn't have read this deeply or this like exhaustive because I, I read until I was like, there's no, okay. I've kind of like gotten 99% of all things I can get down this avenue. Um, I, I wouldn't have worked that hard at it if it was just for me, but I was like, this is going to everybody else. And these this is like incredible insights that people can like just to understand stuttering better and kind of like reduce the mystery of it and then also like here's something that actually works for management here's what we know it's not like oh well this worked for me this didn't work for me hey i just cracked pot theory that if you run 10 minutes a day your stutter improves it's like no this is like research about that with like brain scans and like large large sample sizes so um yeah just thought of like just realizing how, how powerful this would have been made it easy to work on. See, uh, now, uh, two things, okay? S so, uh, number one, um, um, I've had 131 and, and, uh, awesome people who have a stutter from all over the world on my podcast. And just, uh, you know, uh, like you, they're all hashtag awesome. <laughs> I got to say that I got to put that out there because they're all awesome. So, and so I'm out of all of those, two of them had, uh, they were in the States and they had uh, traveled and spent, um, I believe um, it was uh, four months of the um, intensive speech uh, program and, um, 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 and it had helped them. And I thought, I mean, that, that is, I mean, that is just, I mean, it is awesome uh, because, you know, uh, when I was going um in speech therapy in 1975, <laughs> Mr. Tom Lovett, 1975, okay, um, um, I had to go, you know, I'm in school uh, once a week uh, for a whole hour. And in 1975, there wasn't research in 1975 <laughs> on stuttering, you know, duh, 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 duh. but the whole goal was they had to get me speaking like everybody else. And I thought, man, I am broken because I, mean, I don't, I mean, I don't talk like anybody else. And I was, and, um, you know, I was uh, uh, telling myself that I was a born, I'm into a world where I do not fit in. And it's like, I mean, uh, how can I do that? And so in school, in speech therapy, a whole hour every week for 12 years in school, okay, they, they had me go. And I mean, we had archaic devices. We had a tape recorder that had a card that had a strip on there and they put it in and I had to talk and they recorded it. I mean, it, 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 it was archaic. Um, it, it helped. It helped. I loved all my speech uh, therapists. And so, you know, um, you know, I still practice every day because, <laughs> you know, it is a, st a, st you know, it is a daily, st struggle however 
I'm going to get through it because I'm hashtag awesome. Okay. And then also, uh, number two, how did you come up with the title of the book? Uh, so I finished uh, writing the book uh, January 11th, like five years uh, to the day after I started it. Um, and the whole time I was, I had no idea what to call it. I was just like the book, the stuttering book. Uh, and so one night um, I just like went to like my uh, a co-working space and just like, it's like, okay, like time to just like come up with names. I started a, a whole doc of like, I'll just kind of throw stuff out there. Um, and a few, few different ideas. Um, but like it, my original uh, decision was like, was words broken and unspoken? This, the science experience of stuttering, uh, thinking like words broken and unspoken, not, I, I didn't feel like a, a, a judgmental way. Um, but I'm more just like, yeah, like, like we stutter and that's what happens. But, um, my, my editor was like, what about just words unspoken? And I was like, yeah, that's, that's a lot, that's a lot better. And that, that won't give anyone like, uh, no one will think of it in a negative way, even if I didn't mean that. How cool. Okay. Now, uh, can we go over just all briefly the, the, uh, terminology? Cause I mean. You know what? Growing up, I did not know nothing about stuttering. It's just I have it. You know, I don't know what it is. And um, so uh, can you talk about the uh, difference between a a dev, a, a dev, a dev, <laughs> the D word, D, D, developmental st st stuttering um, as opposed to a, a neuro agenic sure and and it's it's funny just like all the insights i got from like reading the research one of the things that they they mentioned is that you know like we we block more on words that, that are uh syntactically complex and like developmental uh, like and even the word like syn syntactic complexity is a syntactically complex word so just anything that has like a lot of different syllables in it or is longer causes us to block more and and it's even like as it was going to, and, and, and as you read in the book, like there's reasons to explain that, like neuro, neurologically. Um, but like uh, uh, to your question, like uh, there's a a developmental stutter is is what most of us have. Um, it's it as a uh, genetic source, and at least to changes in the brain um, as a child. So um, as a child starts stuttering, um, the the, the brains kind of diverge from fluent, from fluent children in certain ways. And then as they recover or persist, that, that changes again. Um, so like recovery children are somewhat different than fluent, fluent children, uh, neurologically. Uh, and then a neurogenic stutter is one that's caused by, um, either like by damage to the brain. Uh, if that's through a stroke, um, in the book we talk about, uh, it is, a surgical operation that left a few people with stuttering there's people who had brain injuries from from combat um there's even uh there's a researcher in in new zealand i believe who's who's, who's doing a lot of research on uh concussion induced stutter uh and then there's also psychogenic stuttering which is caused by extreme stress um which apparently can be resolved through therapy but i know next to nothing about that all right sir uh, thank you for that. Um, I have a, a neurogenic. Um, I was attacked by by a dog at the age of a uh, five, uh, walking home from school, and then he had uh, jumped on me, and then my head hit the uh, concrete, and and so that's how I have my stutter. So okay, now um, actually, if, hmm? if I can interrupt you, uh, there's a, a comedian, uh, uh, Drew Lynch, who who, talk, who spoke a lot about. His experience, yeah. yeah. I don't know if you talked to him or talked about him, but yeah, he was he was like twenty or something. He was playing softball, and a ball hit him really hard, ground ball really hard in the head, knocked him back. He had he had his head back, and then he developed a stutter out of that. And it's it, it's it's amazing because I I would read these studies about uh, developmental stuttering and think, okay, that's a certain like neuro neurological pattern that's different than like a um, neuro neurogenic stuttering caused by like damage to the brain, but like the symptoms and experience seem to be like almost identical, which is like really interesting. I mean, it is <laughs> super interesting, sir. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, can you talk about 
the uh, transition because I love how you have this in in your awesome book. And so I want everybody right now, hop on Amazon and get this book. So I want to have you to talk about this. I mean, because it 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 hit me hard. It it hit me hard. Uh, talk about the uh, journey of you are a stutterer. You are a person who stutters you, and you are a person who has a stutter. Um, yeah, like I, it's, it's funny, like for, for me personally, um, uh, I, 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 I never, I, I never like felt like the stutter defined me in any way. Like I remember even as a kid, um, this is the story that I almost put in the book, but it just didn't quite fit anywhere. Um, I, I'm like five years old and it's like me, my speech therapist, my, my mom and my speech therapist is going like, Thomas, like, who are you? And I was like, um, Thomas. And she's like, who are you? I was like, I like video games. I like playing sports. She's like, who are you? And, and like, I'm, I'm, I'm like looking at my mom to be like, and my mom's like, give her the right answer. Give her the right answer. I'm like, what's the right answer? And then I was like, I was like, uh, I, I like, and, and, and she was like, you are not just a stutterer. You are not just a stutterer. And I was, and like, like <laughs> very true. Uh, but like that, that for me, like that, that, that never quite hit me. I was like, that to me has always been kind of like, duh. Um, so like in, in, in the book, I, there's a like paragraph about like terminology and um, uh, for a, a lot of people, if, if it is like stutterer, person who stutters, person who has a stutter, um, I see it as like something external to us, like it's something that, that, that we deal with. It's like, I'm not inherently a software developer, but it's something I do. Um, I think in stuttering, essentially happens to all of us. There's nothing, any, there's nothing anybody anywhere did that caused you to have a stutter unless they like beat you up and gave you a brain injury, which is, which would be awful. But like, um, it's just it's something that we have and that we deal with in life. And lots of people have things. Um, yeah. Awesome, sir. Uh, thank you very much. All right. So here is our next question. So, okay. In a world where, uh, people who stutter might f f f f face misunderstanding, misunderstandings or a biases. What um, important a message uh, does your a book address uh, uh, that could uh, resonate with uh, both um, individuals who stutter and those who want to better their experiences? Um. Uh, I, I think, yeah, like, uh, I think like the two main like like benefits of, of learning so much about stuttering, like that I did through these papers is, is like demystifying it and then like learning like what actually works and, 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 and that, and, you know, works for what you want. So I think, um, you know, the things I, I, I learned about like, uh, syntactic, uh, complexity, you know, like, um, it, exacerbating disfluency that was like oh like wow like i i, I and and that we tend to stutter more on the first syllable of a word and the first word in a sentence i was like oh yeah huh like that that's something that i just like it makes a lot of sense um i think for, for a lot of people who are worried like is this an emotional thing or is this something i did wrong like will like can this be like eradicated um should, should i be do, doing something to eradicate it's like i think just this information about like like you didn't cause it, your parents didn't cause it. Like, unfortunately, with the current slate of like a, a tre treatments for children, there's nothing like whether you went to speech therapy or not as a kid, it was going to last. Period. Um, so, like, if if you're if you're if, if you're if you have some like resentment against your parents that like, oh, they didn't put me in speech therapy, or my speech therapist didn't know enough to like fix this for me, it's like they weren't going to fix it or get rid of it. Period. Um, and then when it comes to like, like, like managing a stutter. So, uh, um, th this also wasn't in the book, but it was a really great study about like, what are, st uh, stutterers, uh, 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 priorities? Like, do they want essentially, do, do they want to speak more fluently versus do they want to speak more often and not care about their fluency? And, and I, 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 I think even like, you and I personally kind of fall on like the different sides of this. And it is, I think it's a very inherent preference. I don't think you can choose your preference on this or that you were coaching to one preference. But for me, like it is, I, I, I would rather 
speak so fluently that people can't even tell. And, um, and I just, and, and like, I would want to speak, like want to speak every time I, that I want, that I want to, whereas someone like myself and, and, and some of my friends, like they don't want to worry about their fluency at all. They just want to be able to speak and feel accepted and feel like secure enough to speak. Um, and the, the great news is like in the book, I go a lot, I go into a lot about programs that do improve fluency and are shown to improve fluency. Um, but there's also, uh, the great study by, uh, Ross Menzies, this about, uh, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy and how, um, this group of people who, before they went to speech therapy, they did eight, eight, one, eight sessions of cognitive behavioral therapy once a week. And, and like their metrics of like social anxiety, willingness to do uh, difficult speaking situations went through the roof with no change to fluency. And then, the, and then, and then, and then they did speech therapy and it went even higher up and went, went like, li like literally off the charts. Um, and then this group that, that did only speech, speech therapy and no cognitive behavioral therapy only saw like small, small gains in their willingness to, um, speak more often and speaking in, uh, challenging speaking situations and no change in social anxiety. So, um, so that's the, the personal side of like, you can make no changes to fluency and improve your happiness and satisfaction and, and how often you speak. But then there's also programs too, like in intensive speech therapy, like it does work. People say like, Oh, like I did it and kind of worked for, for a bit, but it kind of went away. And like, that's, that is true. Like if, if you do intensive speech therapy, it will, it will d decrease your fluency, um, to mild. Um, but then that will go away unless you do like the proper maintenance programs. Uh, and, but there's also two other programs that we go into, uh, like, uh, metronomic therapy, where you speak in time to a metronome 15 minutes a day, five days a week for eight weeks. And that too will improve your fluency just as much, but it's essentially free and you do it at home. It's much less time intensive than intensive speech therapy. And also intensive speech therapy does like speaking, using those techniques in normal life is sounds unnatural. It sounds more unnatural to people to speak that way than to just stutter as much as however badly you were before. Um, and then once you even get talking about again, from fluency, uh, what I think what's like the coolest part about like all of this is that like, so there is this, this kind of spectrum and people kind of fit like all one side, all one side, anywhere in the middle of like agency versus fluency. And, uh, successful management is like the best of both worlds. It's like you speak more often and you're, and you're more fluent. Um, and we, we, we go into that in the book too. And that's just like the coolest thing in the world. I think is like that, the idea that like, okay, it, it won't ever go away, which is, which is a bummer. Cause like, uh, as I mentioned in the book, like at, at one point I thought I'd beat it. And if, and if I just like took good care of my, took good care of myself, I would, wouldn't stutter anymore. Like period. I was like, Oh, that'd be, a, this be a thing in the past. Um, that isn't the case because, you know, it is a brain thing and it's, it, it, your brain can adapt, but you know, this, this stutter doesn't go away. Um, but the idea that like living better essentially and, and, and taking on more of these challenges like directly leads and, and, and focusing more on your stutter and, and learning more about it and learning how to just deal with it, with this like almost like foreign entity that's kind of also a part of you is learning how to deal with that better. Um, Lisa, better fluency and better happiness, better agency. Like it's just awesome. Oh yes, sir. Cause I, I, cause I mean, I hear all the time, which I'm sure you hear, man, if there was only a pill, there was only a pill, you know, I, my whole life would change. It was like, it's like, okay. So what I, t what I tell everybody is look, you do you, whatever that you want to do it. I mean, you know, cause, cause, um, us, you know, st uh, a stuttering is so individualistic, you know, however that you want to do it, you go do it. I mean, I know what I have been through. <laughs> and so, you know, I'm a lot older now. And so now it's like, look, I want to, I mean, I'm here and I have a stutter and oh, well, guess what? Life goes on. And, 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 and um, what I have learned is that I just love Pedro. It's all good. And he has a stutter. Oh, well. And so, but, you know, there are a lot of people will, you know, I'm, 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 I'm taking, you know, 
a B1 or, you know, or, you know, the uh, mushrooms or, you know, L a theanine. I said, well, you do you, you know, I'm happy for you. You do you because we are all different. So here is our next question. Okay. Now this one, I mean, ooh, this one touched me, Mr. Tom Lovett. This one touched me. So in your, in your uh, book, you talk about interacting with, with uh, uh, various individuals who may have reacted differently to your stuttering. How did these interactions shape your, um, how did these interactions shape your a perspective on self um acceptance and the uh, diversity of of our reactions w uh, within our our um our society yeah so i, I think um I, I like might be different from some people in that like i've said I tell stories about like essentially like being bullied and or people just drawing attention to it like i well, one stories i tell is like my like so I, I i i joined the coast guard i get on boot camp i arrive at my ship which is already like been at sea um and like on day one there's a, there's a there's one of my co-workers like in, in my in my unit in my department he starts like laughing when i talk and they tell someone hey like watch 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 and like you know that was like very unpleasant and like i did not enjoy that um for me personally, though, it hasn't really affected my um, self concept. Like, I, I don't like I, I I I don't feel guilty about having a stutter. Like, it's it can be an, an, an annoyance, and obviously it, it it can like stop me from doing things. Um, but like when I've when people like react that way, it's more I guess I, I it's get more like irritated with other people, and like kind of like mad that like like don't you get it like. Not like, like i mean which I, I also understand like like very few people know uh, uh, very very few people like understand stuttering like as this thing that just happens to you and it's worse worse with stress but like it just happens to other times for for reasons beyond our control um so yeah i, I wouldn't say it would, it would affect me uh personally but i, I definitely like I, I i actually okay uh i, I probably would like if 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 people were less like less lo less likely to react negatively, I, I I would speak up more, for sure. I mean that's that's uh, um, but I guess it doesn't like uh, like affect me on an individual level. I I think. Ooh, Tom, because I don't have to tell you, I've had people <laughs> when I've had a block and my eyes close and my arms go everywhere, uh, and so you know. <laughs> I'm having a conversation with him and then I have the block. My eyes are closed. My arms go everywhere. And then after I come out of the block, I reopen my eyes and they're gone. I was like, oh, okay. So you are not worth my time. So Pedro going to go, <laughs> but I've, yeah. I, yeah, go, go. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say like, I mean, that's kind of one of the things I, I hope with the book is, is in, 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 in introduction I talk about like, you know, like, like when, when, when we were young, like no one under, understood, uh, dyslexia for the most part so like if a kid couldn't read they'd be put in special ed they're like oh like why can't you read everything else seems fine your vision's fine you can't read so, you, there must be some, some some other issue um but now that like everybody kind of knows about it then it's not a big issue to someone say like hey like i'm dyslexic like uh, I, I have friends that don't that are dy dyslexic that, that only brought it up when i told them about my stuttering um but i think like if more people just understood like nothing's wrong with pedro it's just like there's an issue with like speech motor production and like and there's it, that, that's that's all that it, it, there is to it and it's beyond his control he's doing his best like you know to, you know to freak out <laughs> yes and plus i educate and raise awareness everywhere i go tom i'm exhausted <laughs> on the daily <laughs> i'm educating and raising awareness because if they have the information you know uh, they know how to better handle the next person. Cause I mean, that's, that's why I'm here. I mean, I am just an everyday Joe. And, and so 
you know, uh, my goal always is I want to show the world how amazing that we are. And I mean, woo, Tom, like you and a hundred and uh, 30 others from all over the world, we are amazing. Oh my God. I mean, ooh, I have the goosebumps, Tom. We are amazing. So yeah. Woo. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and it's great too. Cause like I've, I'm, I almost never self-advocate or even like self-disclose. Um, so, so other than like the book, I've almost never talked to anybody about stuttering. So it, people like me, oh, the ones like you a lot for actually going out and telling people and explaining it. Yes. Cause I mean, I can't hide this. And then, and then on zoom, Tom, <laughs> on zoom, I disclose, I tell everybody, look, it is not your internet connection. It is Pedro <laughs> having a block. So all I want is your understanding, your patience, your respect, and your eye contact. That's all I want. I will get over it, but it is not your interweb connection. So, you know, don't hit that button and check your connection. It's just Pedro. <laughs> Life goes on. All right. <laughs> so here is our last question, and it's a doozy. So, okay, here we go. Your book might inspire um, and a resonate uh, with others who st who stutter or have uh, faced uh, challenges in s in self um, expression, what advice or um, encouragement do you have for your readers who may be on a similar uh, a journey, and what a uh, 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 positive um um impact do you hope? Uh, your book will have on them yeah i, I think like the journey and, and like I've, I've i've like i've heard other people in um the uh national stuttering association that national stuttering association also use the word journey and it, it really is like um you know like i it, it, the uh, uh you know in, in book i like I, I opened most of the chapters with a story like like uh from my life and the last story is a time when I was I was at work and we're in this big like conference room doing this like onboarding uh, training and there's 100 people in the room and like and we're all in groups of 10 and we need someone from each group to like speak to like tell the rest of the room about like what we've been working on and like uh, you know and, and that to me this is just like a Wednesday at the office and didn't it was it could be a big deal and and as we're doing that like. And we're always kind of working in our group, and then uh, our our like uh, leader goes, okay, like now every, every group's going to talk. I can see that like the rest of my group was like, I don't want to be the one who talks. Oh my god, oh my god! And I was just like, oh, sure, I'll do it. I don't mind. Like it was, it was like no big deal to speak in front of a hundred people. Uh, and then like, and then out of, once we had those ten groups, like he's like, okay, like who wants to go first? And no one raised their hand. I was like, I'll do it. I don't mind. Um, and like, I only tell that story and I only do it at the, the end of the book is like, it seemed easy that day. And it was just a, a regular day. I wasn't like preparing myself for it. I wasn't like psyching myself up. Um, it was just a, like a like regular day. Uh, but it was like really incredible afterwards. I was like, oh my God, like I just, I just did that. And uh, it was, it was uh, like, it's, it's really about like everything that came before that of all those times that I like was nervous but and but I, I just tried i just like went a little bit further and it didn't necessarily work out like um all those stories of like th these these few times i've asked girls out like 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 all many of them went very poorly like like i embarrassed myself or they were just like no thank you um uh and like it was only by doing it and like when i was scared that i was able to do something that scared me in the future um and it really is like because I also had section two in the original part about boot camp, um, where uh, the shock of, of boot camp and it's like the rigidness and the rules, especially on speaking, really set me back. Um, and like before then, I, I've been speaking up a lot and kind of like for the first time, kind of gained my footing of like being being confident enough to like do phone calls and order order things and talk to strangers. And then, then I go to boot camp, and I'm right back into not speaking when I know I want to speak and avoiding and hiding. Um, but like, it really was just like incremental, small steps forward, um, is, is, is all, is all it is. You have to go a, a little bit past your comfort zone and that expands your comfort zone. And it doesn't have to be, oh, I went past my comfort zone and then it, 
it turned out well and, and and now it went well it's like no like it's it's almost even better sometimes to go past your com comfort zone and have it blow up in your face because you're like oh like i was really worried everyone's everyone's gonna laugh at me and you know what every 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 did laugh at me they all think i'm dumb but you know what i'm still here i'm not dead i'm not you know like it, it, it'll be fine like this thing that whole class is laughing at me is, is will, will be forgotten about by tomorrow who cares like you got stronger and you're able to like to do it and just like this thing i, I was thinking even more about like those those chapters as i was writing them it's like the, the only thing that that can prepare you for the hardest thing you, you've ever done is to have taken on the hardest thing you've ever you've, you've ever done the last time because there's times you're like i'm scared of my wits i don't know if i can do this i'm just going to go for it but like and it's so easy to back down but like as you get yourself to step forward and go for it like you have to have had like a history of doing that and then once you do that it's like you expand your comfort zone and things get easy um like that you know speaking in, in that conference room from 100 people like that just became easy because i had done it so many times when i was scared and it had it go wrong that i was able to like i was, I was completely calm i was just like fine yeah I'm, I'm gonna do this and then i was like i was like i know this is this should be way harder for me than for you guys like i'm the only person here that, that i know of that has a speech impediment and i'm volunteering out of the 10 of us to like talk and then out of this room of 100 people i'm the only person to volunteer to go first i was like i know i know what that means no no one else here might have any idea and no one no no one did as far as i know nobody knew how to stutter and that was so uh i guess yeah that's just the, the advice i mean okay so a a couple of things. One that was awesome, and then also, um, you were uh, talking about a boot camp. Well, you know, I was in Air Force. You know, <laughs> I think we had a a little bit easier than all of the other branches of the service. But th I've heard. But they had me as a a chow runner, me, a chow runner, where you have to go and approach a table of 12 TIs, 12 TIs. And you have to ask for a time to eat for breakfast or lunch or dinner. I was the chow runner. We were late for every single meal. But you know what? We ate. We ate. And after a couple of weeks, <laughs> I did it for two weeks, and then, thank God, they picked another person. But look, look what I did. Look, I mean, I was, in, I was the person, I'm in charge of 50 people in my company, 50 people, because they had to eat. Look what I did. I got them to eat, although it was late, but you know what? I did it, so it's all good. Okay. Yeah, and then, like, to that point, too, it's like, once you do those things, like, you can always look back on them and a be proud of yourself, which is a really good feeling because I get down on myself a lot. So be like, oh wait, I actually did that and that was really cool. Um, yeah, and then just be like, yeah, you can use that as like to, to not only feel good about yourself, but also be like, next time you're doing something crazy, you're like, well, I did that. I mean, so why can't I do this? Yes, and 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 here, so here is the cool part. So I am a trainer. Okay, I do this as a career. I train people, I teach people. So I go up on stage. I go, you know, there is a PowerPoint, big old screen behind me. I got my clicker. It's a four hour training, Tom Lovett. Four hours. I'm on stage, got my clicker. And in the whole audience, I may have 20 or 30, 40, 50, 60. I've had about 80, almost 100, and I go up there, and I do my training. I, I mean, I do the presentation, and, and I am on stage. I am on, a person who has a stutter is on stage teaching professionals. How cool is that? And yeah, I do have my hiccups, but I let the audience know if I have a block, y'all need to help me out. And believe me, from the back row, Pedro, we got you. <laughs> and they call out the word that I can't say. 
And so, so the cool part is, is that at the end, all I hear is applause from these amazing people in, in the audience. Look what I did. And I do it a couple times a month. Look what I am doing. And every, every single time I hop on stage, I tell myself, let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. So, yeah, but ooh, yeah, I, I am right there with you, Tom. The, you know, every time I do it, I get a little better. So, yeah, it's all good. Well, Pedro. <laughs> I'm telling you. Okay. And there is just one more topic that, you know, I want to cover because it is important. It's, I mean, you know, um, having a support group because I did not meet another person who stuttered until I was in my 20s. I thought it was just Pedro against the world. And when I met that other person on the street, on the sidewalk, when I had my hand out to shake his hand, I couldn't say anything. He could not say anything. And I saw in his eyes, I saw the pain, the anger, I saw it in his eyes. And for some reason, I, the, the uh, words had to come out, I know, I know. And that was a powerful moment because look, there is someone else like me out there in the world. So uh, can you talk about support groups? Yes. Yeah, so um, it's funny. It's, it's like I, 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 I knew there was chapters and like, I think I may have even gone to one, I like, guess, a kid um, of the National Society Association. Uh, and the first one I went to was like literally right, right, right before COVID, like March, March, 2020. Um, and uh, I, I went there, I didn't know anybody. So obviously I was pretty nervous. And then, um, you know, it is, uh, and we're having a few exercises. I remember like one, we're like, okay, like, 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 and there's like, uh, 15 of us around a conference table and is, and, uh, the leader says, okay, like everyone, uh, close your eyes. And like, knock on the table if you've had someone laugh at the way you talk and you see like everybody knocking you're knocking and then they say like laugh if you've ever not spoken because you because you're stutter and like everybody's knocking and then i was i was like Oof. I, was, I wasn't i wasn't ready for this to like actually hit me i was like i was like i thought i was because like you know i was like oh like i was like you know i was already kind of at peace with it and like i've been writing a book about it thinking about it every day i was like it's not gonna affect me that much I, you know i'm here to like observe and like be supportive of others but like i'm fine um and then, like that got me, and then at that same that same thing, like like that session that was the first session of the day, and um, this is is a woman who's who's in our chapter in Boston. <clears throat> that was her first time going too, and like I mean, we're just like sitting around, and like we're still just kind of talking about the early parts, of it. and she just started crying, just started crying, and was like, I've never met anyone else uh, who had a stutter, and she was like thirty, um, and. So I, since then, I've gotten more involved, um, and I, I went to the the national conference of the, of the, of the NSA last summer, um, uh, uh, July twenty twenty two, and I was kind of like, and I just come from an academic conference, and I was like, well, the academic conference is kind of more my speed. Like I like hearing papers rather than necessarily like someone's own personal experience. Um, but yeah, I went to that, and I was just like, oh man, like it just a lot of it like, like really hit me. It was very incredibly emotional, like three or four days. Um, and, uh, and then I went to the conference this summer, um, and it, again, it was kind of the same space of like, I don't know if it's really for me. I know I should be doing it, but like, I don't know if I'm really going to have that kind of experience. Then honestly, in the first day or two, I was still kind of like overwhelmed and like feeling like, like, like by myself. And then like, I just got like this, like gang of us, it was all like our first or second year, uh, just kind of like formed and like. And like, yeah, like we text each other. We have like, we have like Zoom meetings once a month. Um, yeah, it, it, it this is a really powerful, like one of my friends, Amber, um, I remember like uh, we're at a session at, at the NSA. And again, like I prefer like hard data versus like, like uh, subjective experience because I, I place more faith in hard data than what, like we're humans, we're silly. We come up with lots of silly, silly ideas, but um. I remember like, she was telling a story about like how she, she was like walking her dog and her, her dog's name is Ranger, but she has like 
she struggles with R words. Uh, and I, I, I remember like, just like her just telling how like, yeah, you know, I was walking with my dog Ranger and like someone asked me, oh, like, like what's your dog's name? She, she goes going like, Rrr, and they just started laughing at her. And like, that just like really affected me. Um, yeah. And then even at, at, at the, um, at the like closing open mic of this year's national conference, um, there was someone who, who got up and spoke and like, he was like, he was a chapter leader and he's, he'd been around the NSA for like two decades or something. And he said like, you know, I, I kind of came here thinking I knew my journey and I was kind of like past the finish line. I was kind of, and like, I, I, I kind of made it, but then like coming to the conference made me be like, no, like my journey's not over. I still have plenty of things to, to learn, to work on. And like, I told him I was at first, I was like, I, that's exactly how I felt. Like, and it's, 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 it's crazy. Um, so I highly recommend, uh, looking for a, a local, um, a speech, uh, local centering support group in the U S there's the national Stuttering association in the UK, there's stama, um, you just Google stuff. Um, and then a lot of NSA chapters, like you can zoom in to them you know, if you're like physically far away. Or, I mean, like there's there's people who come to the Boston Zoom meetings who are like into different parts of the country and never lived in Boston. So everyone's very friendly, uh, very welcoming. The NSA National Conference will be in St. Louis, uh, I think like early July next year. Pedro, you should go because I, I think you would love it. <laughs> Um, I will be there, sir. I will be there. I block my time. I block my time. Yes, sir. I'm excited. Awesome. And, and then also, since um, this is uh, the the academic conferences, so um, the the academic conferences can be like, very overwhelming. Like it's it's funny. Like so, I had read a lot of research papers before I went, so I kind of like, I, I knew like like a lot of the a lot of the, the neuroscience papers that people are talking about, and a lot of the concepts that they're talking about that um some some presenters would would say like hey like this is differences in brain development for children who stutter as they start stuttering and then as they recover or persist and you, you kind of see like a lot of like even like speech therapists or like people in academia who aren't working on the so like hard sciences kind of like almost be like well i don't really understand that um i think like what i aimed to do with the book and which i i, I hope I've, I've done well enough is is explain the the, the latest research in accessible terms. So like if, if you, if you've read the book, you can attend a Southern conference and go to any talk and you'll be right there with people who are, uh, uh, who are, who are in, in academia and the next, uh, Inter international fluency association conference, um, will be in Austin next year. So Pedro, you should check that one out too. Well, you know, Austin is in, is in, in my, my uh, backyard. So yes, sir. So let me write that down. Austin one. Um, and so, uh, Tom, um, I want to tell you, uh, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. This has been an awesome uh, conversation. Okay. Now there is a bookmark. There is a quote on page one. Uh, uh, um, it's on page uh, 150. Okay. Okay. So if I can have you read the the uh, third uh, paragraph, because that hit me, woo, that hit me hard. It's on page 150. So hit it, sir. Starting with uh, comparing? Yes, sir. Sure. Comparing my life to what it used to be, I feel grateful for what I have today. And like Lar Lar Klesko wrote, I feel a sense of accomplishment for what I've achieved. When I think about simple tasks that used to terrify me, like phone calls, I'm proud to say that I now do those things routinely. Contrasting my old self with my current self is no longer scary. It's become a source of confidence. Ooh, look at this time. Look, <laughs> that is a, ooh, yeah. Okay, so, ooh, yeah. All right, sir. So is, um, okay, so, so um, my a podcast is, is now in 125 countries on six continents. I am blessed. I am super blessed. Now, now I know that my people are going to reach out to you. What is the best way to have them do that? Uh, in, Instagram uh, and, and, and Twitter slash X. I, I'm, I'm at Tom Lovett Podcast. Um, I also have a Reddit account. Um, you slash... 
I think it's Tom Lovett podcast now, um, or it might be also Tom Lovett, or just um, I have an or email, hi at tomlovett.com. All right, sir. Um, so um, I will have all of those hyperlinks in the show notes. So I want to tell everybody, get the book, buy the book, read the book. It's an awesome book. I I have read it a couple of times. It is awesome. Uh-huh. It, Sir, you have written an amazing book. I thank you. This is my life. In this book, this is my life. And so I want to tell you, you are a bright light in our community. So, sir, I am truly honored to have you here, you know, um, again. And so I wish you nothing but success. Well, and thank you, thank you for, having me, uh, for having me on again, Pedro. Like, yeah, you, you were very supportive in two years before the book was even finished uh, and to have this again. Uh, yeah, it's, it's absolutely wonderful. Like I, it, 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 writing a book by yourself for five, for five years, like can be pretty brutal at times. And, uh, so those, that, that support like, like really helps. And, uh, for, for anyone who's, who's read the book, uh, t- tell your friends, tell your family members, tell your speech therapist, l- leave reviews on Amazon because that really helps me as well. Um, and yeah, just reach out, say hi. That is awesome. And here, oh, here is a cool part, Tom. I did not tell you this. When I heard this, my heart just, I mean, how awesome is this? There are some universities who have our podcasts on their syllabus. I mean, it's like, I mean, I mean, how cool is that? So schools around the country, they're going to learn about Tom Lovett's book, let me tell you. And so I, I mean, I am just honored and blessed and proud to be a part of this amazing uh, community. And so uh, one more time, I, sir, I want to tell you, uh, thank you, uh, uh, thank you, thank you. I want for everyone to go and get his book. It is uh, titled Words Unspoken. The Science, Experience, and Treatment of Stuttering by Tom Lovett. Everyone, go right now, hop online, hop on Amazon, and get this book. It's awesome. Sir, I hope you have an awesome day. Take care, be well, and stay safe. Thanks. You too, Pedro. Thank you, sir. If you like this podcast, head on over to Apple Podcasts. Subscribe, rate, and review. Thank you for listening, and we will talk again.